still stretching across portions of South Florida and through Cuba and as far north as Georgia with these cloud bands continuing to wrap around the center of circulation. As of 11 a.m., here's the latest advisory. Hurricane Rita, again, a Category 4 hurricane. Winds sustained at 140 miles per hour to reach Category 5 strength. It has to have winds minimal of 155 miles per hour. Continues to move west at 13. Now it's a little over 260 miles west of Key West. Let's take a look at the forecast cone. A little bit of a change this afternoon as the cone narrows. You can see it continuing as a four, maybe even downgraded to a three, but nonetheless it is going to make landfall as a major hurricane somewhere along the Texas coastline. You can see just the uh, western fringes. Looking at this satellite imagery, you can see the eye wall. The hurricane hunters went in and said that the eye wall was closed, but they did say that the pressure had fallen and was low. Preliminary data in from the planes that fly into the center of the storm and the pressure appears to be dropping. That is a sign, uh, surely, of some strengthening. We could see winds ramped up within the next update, close to 150 miles per hour. So we do. Potentially deadly hurricane out in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see right now winds are 150 miles per hour, pressure 920 millibars. Moving west at 13 miles per hour, we're going to get an advisory here at 5 o'clock, and we may actually see this become a Category 5 hurricane. It's only 5 miles per hour shy, a little over 5 miles per hour shy. If that doesn't scare you by itself. How about this? Look at the symmetry of the circulation out here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is very, very deadly circulation if this were to hit land right now. That's not enough. How about this? Let's look at the size of the circulation. I've stopped it here. We've got some ship reports out here. There are some tropical storm winds way over there at 38 miles per hour sustained. These are not gusts. And up here, outside the cloud canopy, 40 miles per hour, way up there. Of course, we've got the 150 in here, so it's a very large circulation, and it's going to produce very, very high wave action, and that's going to be moving away from the circulation and spreading across the Gulf of Mexico toward the northern Gulf Coast over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. So well before the hurricane ever gets to land, you're going to see some high waves all the way along the Florida coastline and further on. Now, it's been tracking basically to the west. We're going to see some wobbles. That latest wobble is basically a little bit to the north. Watch it go, oh, there's a little north wobble. We think it's going to continue basically on a westward track. Your general direction, you need to be paying attention and be uh, doing what emergency managers tell you to do. Currently, 165 mile per hour winds, category five, moving west at 13, pressure down to 914 millibars. Boy, that's one of the lower uh, pressures in the Gulf of Mexico that we've seen. We'll give you some statistics on that later. Now, it's mo then moving basically west, you see this little wobble here to the north. We think that's a wobble anyway, and it'll continue to wobble back. It promises to intensify even more. Take a look at these satellite images. It is a very well-organized storm, very asymmetrical. A lot of thunderstorms banding around the eye. Take a look at that eye. It's got the stadium effect. This is indicative of a very, very strong storm that will continue moving west, northwest, and threatening parts of Texas and Louisiana in a couple of days. Right now, 165 mile per hour winds. The pressure continues to drop dramatically. 24, actually this should be 24.4 north, 86.6 west. Moving west at 13 city when it's going to get ready to make landfall. Is it still looking like a 4 or a 5? Do you think it'll weaken any? Well, Phil, I really can't uh, tell you with any, you know, certainty on that. Uh, I think the wise thing is to go ahead and plan for a Category 4 or 5 hurricane. We're forecasting it to come down a little bit to a Category 4, and that's what Katrina was. So that, that's not exactly good news here. Uh, but they'll have very similar storm surge uh, flooding, just like they did with Katrina near, and in this case, to the northeast, to where the center across to the coast. And, uh, of course, one of the most vulnerable areas we're talking about here in the path of the hurricane would be Galveston Island. Now, Max, we all know from Katrina we learned a lot of lessons from uh, when it made landfall, a lot of devastation and destruction. What can we tell the folks out in Texas? How can they get ready and prepare for the arrival of Rita? Um, uh, Phil, we've been talking to the folks there in Texas. Sometimes we get hurricanes that become a category five, weaken to four, then come back to five, weaken to four, come back to five a number of times. But the longest continuous is three days. Well, we have about two and a half days to landfall now, and this one is showing no signs whatsoever of weakening. As a matter of fact, based on the satellite imagery here, the cold cloud tops are cooling. 
even more, which means it's, it's strengthening and the eye is contracting just a little bit. We'll have to see what the reconnaissance finds. We don't expect it to remain a Category 5 at landfall, but right now it's got a fabulous ventilation. It's basically exhaling aloft and all the mass is going away. It's going away faster than it's coming in at the surface, therefore the pressure's falling and the winds are going up in the circulation. We've got a couple of interesting things here. First of all, if you look around the circulation here, you can see way off to the north here briefly, 35 to 40 mile per hour sustained winds way up here beyond this cold cloud top here. And down in the south here, we've seen some 40 mile per hour winds down here as well. As of 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time, you can see those winds up there at 175 miles per hour. Fortunately, this situation is very rare. We don't see it very often, and we're hoping it's going to weaken, but the official forecast at landfall is about 155 miles per hour, which is just barely shy of Category 5, the strongest of Category 4. So don't expect this to weaken much, but we're still hoping it's going to come down from the 175. Moving west at 9, that slowed just a little bit. We saw that wobble in there. That may eventually affect where it actually makes landfall. Básicamente sobre el área del Golfo de México, moviéndose hacia la costa tejana. Es impresionante, es histórico y uh, prácticamente difícil de creer, prácticamente como ciencia ficción, lo que está ocurriendo sobre el Golfo de México esta noche. He aquí lo que les estaba comentando de las estadísticas de este sistema. Estamos hablando de que ahora Rita uh, cae como el tercer huracán más intenso en la historia. La presión barométrica central, 897 milibaras. Entiéndase que la presión normal es como 1,013 aproximadamente y que Rita ayer por la mañana tenía una presión aproximada de 985 milibaras. Ha bajado casi 100 milibaras desde entonces y como ven eh, queda solo detrás del gran ciclón de los callos en el día del trabajo de 1935 en, en términos de su intensidad. Katrina, por cierto, ha bajado a quinta mientras que antes estaba cuarta, eh, queda fuera de la lista Camil, ese gran ciclón que afectó a la zona eh, de Mississippi hace varios años. Eh, más adelante les tengo una análisis. Parts of the Gulf of Mexico, the uh, winds are now up to 175 miles per hour. The pressure continues to drop, and as you mentioned, this is now the third most intense hurricane ever in the Atlantic Basin. We'll have more on that in just a moment. You can see on the satellite representation here just how large this storm. The upper level winds and the environment for this hurricane are very favorable for development and that spells bad news for the Western Gulf Coast. Uh, keep in mind it is a category five now and they can't maintain that intense status uh, for that long. This storm will go through fluctuations of weakening and strengthening as it continues to track off towards the west. It's what you've heard here, uh, a meteorologist here at Local 10 referred to as eyewall replacement. Diana, well, we have a forecast track that shows the hurricane coming ashore at least at this point. On the upper Texas coast, we have to remember that the worst of the weather is just to the right of that. Right. So, in fact, we're looking at potential storm surge and strong winds all the way from the upper Texas coast uh, into southwestern Louisiana. Right. Now, Ed, we can't see that, that map behind you very well. What are the, according to your uh, analysis right now, what are the cities directly in the path? Well, the cities that are going to be most impacted are course in our hurricane watch area if you can't see it very well this is intercoastal city right. Louisiana westward and southward of Port Mansfield Texas this is where the hurricane watches it means hurricane conditions are possible we're now discussing and coordinating the upgrade to hurricane warning over part of this area likely to be put up in about an hour or so and we'll focus more than on the areas that are going to have the greatest impact clearly from Galveston and Houston eastward to Lake Charles appears to be the uh, area at greatest risk at this time, but some deviation to the right and left is possible. And what are the chances of it degrading? I know it's going to be dangerous regardless, but if it's a five out in sea, that's good if you, in, in terms, there's a good chance of it going down, correct? We are forecasting gradual weakening. It looks like the hurricane has peaked in its intensity. The winds have come down a little bit. Still category five, still potentially catastrophic. We think landfall will be as a major hurricane, at least category three, at this point, we're forecasting Category 4 for landfall. Mm -hmm. And the, the hurricane winds are not just going to stop as soon as it hits land. You're forecasting hurricane winds how far into Texas? If the forecast goes as, or if the storm goes as forecast now, we could see hurricane force winds up 100 miles or so, uh, extending that far inland. 
Uh, but again, I want to emphasize, I know there's a lot of talk about ha ha Galveston and Houston, and they are very vulnerable, mm -hmm. but the areas farther to the east are as well from sure. this hurricane mm -hmm. into southwest Louisiana. Oh. Looking at winds of 170 miles an hour right now, moving to the west-northwest, so it's started to shift a little slightly northerly and eventually is going to continue to curve somewhat. But uh, what we're looking at this with this system is we've had that area of high pressure in place, and uh, that's been kind of steering that more to the west with this starting to move out. Of course, there's always still a little bit of uncertainty. Feet mark, and they're going to outrun the hurricane. It's not moving as fast as the waves that are generated by the hurricane, so they're leaving it and starting to pound the coast of Louisiana and Texas, and those are going to slowly rise overnight and become very large tomorrow. And that's going to cause huge beach erosion, and then when the hurricane comes close to the land, it's going to produce the surge of water that's associated with the winds coming on shore that's going to flood the coastline as well. So we've got two things there. Here's the circulation and the latest reconnaissance indicates a pressure down a bit to 911 millibars. That's not good news. So the system is definitely not weakening. It's strengthening slightly relative to the pressure and continues on its west-northwest track. Now let's look at a couple of things of what's going to happen here. First of all, the wave action. Over the next 24 to 36 hours, 20 to 30 feet locally, we could have some waves as high as 40 feet, severe beach erosion in this area, and a lot of that's going to occur before the hurricane ever gets there, so stay away from the water. You can see a very wide area of high wave action out along the coastline, and that's going to be dropping away first here, but it, all the way down to Brownsville, you're going to see the high waves. Now let's look also at the surge potential. That's the water pushing, uh, the wind pushing the water on shore. We have basically a broad area here of 6 to 10 feet. This is a total water rise, so this is a combination of the surge and the wave setup. We can say the 6 to 10 feet in this area because the wave action is going to cause the water to rise. The actual surge itself, we're not exactly sure where it's going to be, I'll show you where our best estimate is in, here in a second, but locally it could be 20 feet or higher, depending on exactly where it makes landfall. And we'll tell you where that is as we get closer to landfall. Let's look at our current condition and the current circulation. 89 mile per hour wind out there. Waves are upwards of 35 to 40 feet in that particular area, and they're sp spreading very quickly toward the Texas and Louisiana coastline. Here's our projected path. Early Friday morning, basically still west-northwest. Friday evening, still west-northwest. Early Saturday morning, approaching the coast. The wind is already very... The hurricane moves closer to shore, which we are very familiar with here in South Florida. The other situation that's different than when Rita passed here is this storm is very large. And you can see that on the satellite representation. So no matter where the center of circulation makes landfall, the devastation, much like Katrina, is going to be wide. Widespread all the way across the Texas and Louisiana coastline. And even if right Right now, the storm did move very close to the Houston area. Uh, Lake Charles would continue to be underneath there. And right now, uh, we do, we're here in a minute. I think we have a chance to go. Es de 175 millas por hora como estuvo durante el día de ayer. Y esto lo presentamos anoche. Si no se. I can still stand up though, so I know we're not, we're not in the middle of the hurricane. These are probably the tropical winds she was talking about. You know, the winds have changed, and so is the temperature. We had record degree temperatures for this area of Texas yesterday, up to 100 degrees, and now. We're pretty cool with these winds blowing. The low-lying areas of Texas are in big trouble, especially along South Houston and in Galveston, and that's where I am. You see the marshes behind me. Let's take a look at how it, uh, how it is on Galveston Beach right now with the waves coming in. Uh, the tide has been rising and falling all morning. For being with us once again. Thank you. So uh, we're getting reports now from the state of Texas saying that they're especially concerned about the uh, coastal city of Port Arthur. Where do you see Hurricane Rita heading? Yes, at this time, the forecast uh, remains for a landfall on the upper Texas coast, potentially into the extreme southwestern part of Louisiana. Uh, Port Arthur is very near the border. The worst of the weather is always to, just to the right of the center. So the center forecast to come ashore um, somewhere near to just east of Houston and Galveston, that would put the Port Arthur area eastward to Lake Charles in the worst possible spot. But there still is some uncertainty in the track, even in the last few hours, and if the track wobbles a little bit to the left, even by 50 miles or so, that would put the storm surge and strongest winds to Galveston and Galveston Bay and up to Houston. Now we just heard, of course, that Hurricane Rita has uh, maximum sustained winds, I believe, at about 135. So there, it is on a weakening trend. Do you expect it to weaken further before it actually makes landfall? Yes. Yeah, so it's right now at the borderline of the Category 4, Category 3 hurricane. 
we think that um, while the waters are still warm, the ocean waters are still warm ahead of it, the depth of that warm water is decreasing. And so the chances are that it will slowly weaken uh, to landfall, most likely come ashore as category three, just a, still some slim possibility of landfall category four. This is from Mark and Wendy that it's not a matter of which city, but which area, which grouping of cities here will be on what side of the storm? Because at this point, uh, we're fairly sure that it could be anywhere really from about Galveston over to the Lake Charles, Louisiana area. Uh, you can see that the eye has become much less better defined at this point. It's sort of closing in right now. It is still, though, a major, major hurricane, certainly a force to be reckoned with, and it is getting very close now to the coastline of the upper Texas Gulf Coast and western Louisiana. The 11 a.m. advisory here, 210 miles southeast of Port Arthur, Texas. Winds 135, gusting to 161. This is still a Category 4. The movement is northwest at 10 and the pressure 929 millibars. Take it out in time here and again a Category 4, maybe a 3 at landfall. Nonetheless, it will be likely a major hurricane as it makes its way on shore, then stalls out in East Texas and West Louisiana. Could dump as much as 25 inches of rain on these folks. And by the way, hurricane force winds a swath right now of about 170 miles wide. So again, we're not talking about one force, and we see that eye getting ever closer to the coastline there. Well, you know what, Tina, I was looking at this, and I'm going, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, am I looking at a wobble or is this a trend? You watch it. Doesn't it look like it's now starting to make more of a turn? to the north. It, it looks to be like a trend, quite frankly, and we'll talk about the latest coordinates here and the direction in which it's moving. Sure enough, it had been moving west-northwest. If you were with me all morning long, you know that it was moving around 10 miles per hour. Now it is due northwest, 27.4 and 91.9, the current coordinates. If you're not tracking at home, I know not all of you are, uh, are, are gotten, uh, do have your little NBC6 hurricane trackers and you don't not everybody writes this down, so to, take, to make it easier, it's 220 miles to the southeast of Galveston, Texas. Might be a little more appropriate to tell you it's about 200 miles to the south-southeast of a place called Cameron, Louisiana. And uh, the most recent forecast... Well, the destruction relative to the stronger winds is going to be relatively narrow. That's this little donut right in here you can see on radar. That's called the eye wall. That's where the strongest winds are, and that's where the biggest destruction and the highest surge will be wherever that crosses the coastline. And notice right now it's taking a little jog to the north. And that puts it a little closer to the Louisiana coastline, but we think it's going to continue on toward the northwest, but with a little jog, it gets closer and closer to Lake Charles and farther away from Galveston. Good for them and bad for Lake Charles. In the meantime, there's a lot of area of stronger winds and very heavy rain. Of course, you've heard the news about the New Orleans situation, and that's going to be persisting with heavy rain there, and that northward jog does not help them. Now, let's look a little bit farther, though, at the radius of hurricane winds and tropical storm winds. This is where it is right now, so we're seeing some tropical storm force wind gusts on the coast of Louisiana. Let's watch where the yellow area goes. That's where power outages are likely. The red area is where we're going to see some damage relative to uh, uh, trees and things. So as it comes in here, notice power outages go into Houston, they go into Lake Charles, and they're also in uh, Louisiana over toward New Orleans, and then they pull off to the northeast. And then that core, that donut of strong winds, is inside of here. So let's look relative to that donut of strong winds, what's going on. On the satellite imagery, the eye is becoming a little less organized, so it appears that the system is trying to weaken, and that is great news. But it's not going to have time to weaken below a Category 3 hurricane by any means before it gets to the coast, we don't think. And it's still up there in the Category 4 range with a very low pressure. Hour. But of course, as the system gets closer, it is going to really kick those winds up. And of course, it is a Category 3, which means it's still a very dangerous system. And we are seeing that rain flowing on into the area as well. And that is going to be a big problem with this system. Let's go up across there. That's cloudy ground, lightning a lot. Hey, you see that? That's when it was going through an eye wall replacement cycle, which weakened it. Uh, uh, temporarily, but now the eye is forming well again, and the purples are surrounding it, so it seems like it's leveled off, and there you can see it looks like this is going to go very close to Port Arthur. Still possibility of it wobbling one side or the other. Here are the numbers as of the new advisory, 28.2, 92.6. Weakened a touch, and I heard Nikki mention that they're uh, breathing a little easier tonight. This is still a major hurricane. This is a Category 3 on the Sapper-Simpson scale. Uh, the major hurricanes from 3 to 5, the most dangerous type, and there is a uh, 
a couple of signs here that the storm may be fluctuating in intensity a touch. Aircraft reconnaissance flights have been in and out of the storm over the last 24 hours, and pretty much the biggest driving factor has been the concentric eyewall replacement cycles, which are typical with major storms. Bottom line, best case scenarios for the upper Texas coastline in western Louisiana is a category three. Worst case would be if this thing started to get out of an eyewall replacement cycle and strengthen to a category four. Here's the latest uh, latitude, longitude, and information on the storm as of the newest advisory category three, just 200 miles to the east southeast of Houston. Winds are 125 miles per hour gusting up to 155 and the movement now northwest at 12 pressure at 930 millibars. Let's show you that forecast track and by 2 a.m. on Saturday, the storm is projected to move inland between may make it a little earlier the way it's going right now. It's taken a little jog to the north suddenly. The reconnaissance aircraft verifies that and so does the satellite image. You can see it looping just north right there. Now, if it continues on the track, it's already farther north, so now we're a little farther into Louisiana rather than into Texas and a little farther away from Houston Galveston. Good news for them, but bad news for the Lake Charles and uh, extreme uh, western portions of Louisiana. Now, some of the strong winds are going to be coming on shore here very soon to Louisiana, and then the satellite review. And I have a little bit of good news. I mean, we're trying to find any kind of a silver lining we can in this potential catastrophe for Texas and Louisiana. Looks like the northwestern edge is beginning to shear just a bit. It looks like it's getting just a little bit weaker. Now, having said that, I still need to let you know it is still a major category three hurricane and still bearing down on the border of Texas and Louisiana. Again, we're hopeful that we'll see some additional weakening before landfall, but uh, even if it remains the way it is right now, it still has the potential to do quite a bit of damage. We'll show you what a Category 3 can do in just a minute. The 9 o'clock advisory has the center 95 miles southeast of Port Arthur, Texas and moving northwest at 11, which means it'll make landfall about 5 a.m. But of course, hurricane conditions are already. And if you look at the grid system here, each grid is in terms of latitude, longitude, 60 by 60. So 60 miles long by 60 miles wide. Again, here's the storm. And we're talking, we're within this grid in terms of making landfall somewhere around Sabine Pass. So this storm is under 60 miles away. It's still moving on towards relatively the northwest at 10 to 11 miles per hour, 60 miles away. Under than that, we're talking about uh, six hours, maybe even seven if we're lucky, before we see the eye wall start approaching. In Texas, this is Hurricane Rita. Now, throughout the day, the eye shrunk. It has lost a couple of uh, miles per hour every advisory or so. Right now, about 120 miles per hour. But don't get me wrong, this is still a very uh, strong and dangerous hurricane. Take a look at the eye wall. Right now, plenty of convection around it, so it looks like it will make uh, landfall as a Category 3. The radar showing that all the rain and the waves are moving onshore over parts of Louisiana. The clockwise winds, however, is blowing the air away from land over parts of Houston and Port Arthur and even Galveston right now. There is no threat right now of any surge coming here because the water is being pushed away from land. This is the 10 p.m. advisory. They're giving advisories now every hour because it's so close to land. 120 mile per hour winds, 28.9 north, 93.1 west, moving northwest at 12. Right now, 83 miles southeast of Port Arthur, Texas. We're about 70 miles south. Even though it looks like we haven't seen a lot of strengthening, a slight weakening over the last couple of hours, you're still seeing a lot of convection right around that center. But also notice the grid points here, latitude, longitude. The center is just in this quad quadrant here, and each box is 60 miles long by 60 miles wide. And we're talking about it's within that 60 mile zone in terms of the uh, center, which means we're going to see some landfall easily over the next uh, probably five to six hour in terms of, of the northern eye wall. But winds already being felt all across a good chunk of Louisiana. We're talking about hurricane force. The uh, miles or so off the coast and uh, uh, headed towards that uh, Sabine uh, Lake area. Uh, we really think that, you know, the storm surge is going to be very, very high. A lot of people are kind of downplaying this because it's only a category three. But we're going to have 15 and 20 feet of storm surge, uh, you know, not only on the coastline here, but it's going to push well up uh, in and there. And I think that uh, the biggest uh, concern here is probably near Cameron, Louisiana. Uh, they'll push up uh, Calcasieu Lake all the way up towards Lake Charles, very similar to what they had in Hurricane Audrey back in 1957. Uh, Sabine Lake is over here, the Port Arthur area. And that land area in between there, which is really in a very low lying and marsh, I think the water is going to top that and go pouring into that Sabine Lake area. And, and what I got.
Um, certainly, we learned a lot in Andrew, and that, and we changed the uh, the hurricane force uh, winds that we, that we are designed and building for in coastal areas. Uh, there's a lot of buildings out there that haven't been designed as those codes, of course. Um, the Houston uh, area changed their uh, wind code from 100 and, from 80 miles an hour to 110 miles an hour base wind speed, but there is a, uh, I'd say it's a little bit confusing to try to take a category size hurricane and convert it into what a building is actually designed for. I would uh, would not expect to see major buildings have uh, significant structural problems from, a, from this hurricane unless there was other conditions. But, but between then and now, it's going to be very, very wet. And this is the system we're looking at right here. This is now tropical depression number 20. And we have tropical storm warnings up from Cabo Catoche down to Punta Grisa. And then tropical storm watches up on the other side of the Yucatan Peninsula in case the system remains a tropical storm once it becomes a tropical storm later today. At least that's the forecast. Let's look at the latest information on it. Here it is here. Right now, it's moving west-northwest at 6, not a very fast motion, and winds are 30 miles per hour, expecting to get to, get to uh, 40 miles per hour before making landfall later tonight in the Yucatan. The primary impact is going to be heavy rain. We can see that by looking at this satellite image. Look at the extent of these huge thunderstorms and showers, and that all is going to have to pass Yucatan over the next 24 to 36 hours. So get your umbrellas out. Find a dry place and enjoy your vacation indoors because it's not going to be dry outside. Now, in the meantime, that area is going to come across the Yucatan, then it's going to re-strengthen into a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico and then strike the northern coast of Mexico. But some of that rain is going to come into South Texas. That time frame is about three days away. So watch for some rain coming into South Texas in about three days. Now, we have another system out there in the Atlantic. It's far out in the Atlantic and remaining weak. This is Tropical Depression 19 on a race to become Stan before our Tropical Depression 20 becomes Stan. Stan and Tammy are the next two names in the Atlantic, by the way. Suroeste del Golfo. ...to bring some wet weather to South Florida this week. And Tropical Storm Stan is out over open water again, this time in the Bay of Campeche, and it could become a hurricane. So, obviously, we want to bring you up to date on all the latest tropical activity. Meteorologist John Garaldi is here now to bring us up to date on all of that. You got John? it, guys. We have a lot going on right now in the tropics. First of all, we're not really concerned concerned with Tropical Storm Stan, although it is getting better organized as it is moving into the Bay of Campeche. The winds right now are up to 45 miles per hour and is forecast to continue to move to the west and probably will be a hurricane as it moves into sections of Mexico, not the United States by Wednesday. So again, we're really not all that concerned with this. However, take a look at this vigorous tropical wave that we are watching very closely east of Florida. There it is showing up very nicely. As a matter of fact, the Hurricane Center probably will be investigating this tomorrow as they send a plane out there. Notice the direction of motion moving in our direction towards the state of Florida. Now, if it just remains a tropical wave, then we're going to get some pretty good rain out of this. That's our latest thinking sometime later Tuesday, though that would be tomorrow night into Wednesday. However, there's still a slim possibility that this could develop into the next tropical depression or maybe a tropical storm. So that's why we're going to have to keep our eyes on this very, very closely over the next couple of days, and you should stay tuned in as well. Much more on my local forecast is coming up in a few minutes. I'll see you then. The system could put a real damper, in fact, on beach plans really for the rest of the week. Yuck. For the very latest, we're going to turn to meteorologist John Garaldi. That was my meteorologist term there. there. There you go. I like that. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, we have a little bit of good news. And the reason why I'm saying that is because the wave remains very disorganized. There you see it off to our east over the Atlantic. Now, the Hurricane Center has canceled their flight into there today because, again, it is disorganized. And notice how most of the moisture is on the east coast or east side of this trough of low pressure. So over the next couple of days, it shouldn't be all that bad. Of course, we're going to see passing showers. It's going to be breezy, I would have to say, uh, for this afternoon right through tomorrow. But I don't think we're going to be getting into the real, let's say, heavy rain until sometime Thursday into Friday. So we'll be watching this very, very closely. Meanwhile, on the rain you can see some passing showers, some sunshine coming in on the breeze, basically over portions of Fort Lauderdale. There's Hialeah is well off to our east, and it's not here yet. Yeah, we're catching the, the, the leading edge, the front edge of these clouds with that wave, but the bigger activity, not here yet. So we are going to be in the soup, as they say, for a number of days here on end. The good news, I will tell you, outside of our tropical wave that we're going to deal with for, it looks like, right through Friday, and 
Hurricane Stan, which is not going to be a player for South Florida. The rest of the tropics, clean and green, as they say. Nothing out there. You can see it encompasses much of the Bahamas all the way down in toward the Caribbean. As we take a closer look, earlier I was explaining to you how there is a little weak surface low over the Andros Islands. Meanwhile, you can see all of the moisture associated with this is divided between the rainy side, which is located from the north and east, from the center of this surface low, and then there's the dry side. This is the side where we're actually seeing some upper level wind shear. This is the strong wind shear that's coming off of Hurricane Stan that just made landfall around the Bay of Campeche. This is a very large storm, so the outer flow of this is actually inhibiting the development of this tropical wave into some sort of a tropical entity. Now, it doesn't mean that it's not going to become a tropical depression, but for today, right now, the upper level winds are not favorable. Now, for the next 24 to 48 hours, the Sunshine State will continue to see all of this moisture. South Florida may be in a flood watch and a flood warning within the next 24 hours, all depending on the system as it moves move slow portions made landfall over the last couple of hours notice it right in there over southwestern sections of uh, Mexico the winds right now are at 80 miles per hour it's a category one storm gusting winds gusting to 98 miles per hour and it's moving very slowly off to the south at seven miles per hour and all the moisture will basically stay down here over the next couple of days but we are getting some indications that maybe later in the week some of low pressure with a low pressure center now very close to the Florida Straits here with a convergence of the air all the way down to the Antilles with the potential for flooding rains from the northern Antilles Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico in the next 24 hours this area we don't expect to develop but up in here this low pressure area could form into a more formidable system over the next 24 to 36 hours. Currently, the lower surface pressure is down here, but there's a little spin further to the north, so it's right now a little discombobulated. Let's look for a second here at the close-up view of the circulation. And you can see there's the mid-level circulation we're talking about, very close to uh, Grand Bahama Island. The surface low pressure center is down here, but look at all the rain streaming into Florida and some strong gusty winds included in that. That's going to be persistent the next 24 hours. Look at all this rain coming through here. Miserable day at the beach, stay out of the water, victory at sea out here, surfers forget it. This rain's going to spread across Florida the next 24 to 36 hours and what's waiting aloft is a low pressure center in the mid and upper portions of the atmosphere right there. So you can see it spinning. When the surface low gets underneath that, there's a potential for that to develop in the Gulf of Mexico. And if that happens, then we could see it strengthen significantly. Eventually, a cold front, that trough you see right there is going to come by and sweep it off to the northeast. So it's going to come across Florida once and then Florida again. So expect lousy weather in Florida the next two to three days. In the meantime, we've got a weakening tropical storm stand over land. The big threat was rain. Veracruz didn't have much wind, but they've already had more than a foot of rain. And let's look at the circulation here. We thought, but nevertheless, it is definitely moving in our general direction. Uh, zoom in close look diagrams the wave as the axis of the wave is right about through there and the wind flow is like this. So we've got an easterly wind blowing the moisture over Florida. You notice today all day long it was kind of a drippy, yucky, humid day and it looks like this is probably going to be one of the better days that we're going to have because all of this is projected by almost all the computer models to advect westward and to move over Florida. Look what's happening in the state right now. You can kind of get an idea of the a gentle little curvature, not really a rotation, but a curvature around the top of the wave here and you can see the moisture moving in northern Florida a little faster than down here so it's like a big arm sweeping through and it goes from top to bottom in the state everybody is pretty wet here's a look at the radar you can see some heavier rain showers right now moving through Broward County kind of training in echoes as they move off to the east one after another Miami-Dade County another little line right here and you can see how quickly they form in just two hours time it goes from not much happening to a whole bunch of stuff offshore not much in south stayed yet are the keys, but that will change. For Jacksonville earlier this evening, most of the rain, however, has moved into Georgia and South Carolina. But if we look down south, here is that uh, small area of clouds and rain. It is starting to grow, and it is that moisture that is moving into South Florida. Now, as of 11 p.m., here's the latest on Tammy, 40 mile per hour winds. Right now, it is about 42 miles northwest of Jacksonville, Florida, and by tomorrow, we will probably say goodbye to it. But in the water vapor imagery, we can see that plume of moisture making its way. Well, developing in the Florida Straits is bound to make its way towards us. Here's the remnants of Tammy down to the south around western Cuba. That is a low pressure system and all. One out over the Atlantic off to the southeast of Bermuda, and another one here in the northeast Gulf of Mexico.
Tammy was caught up in that, and all that moisture from the tropics continues to be funneled up into the southeast U.S. Does not look like either feature will produce a, a significant tropical system in the near future, but this one here uh, in the uh, Atlantic off to the southeast of Bermuda is showing signs of getting a little better organized here. As you can see, the, the deep convection here starting to bubble up. So this will be a feature to watch for slow development over the next couple of days. Aside from that, none of these features to Weather Center, I'm Sarah Libby. And Rich Johnson, 50 minutes past the hour. Time for your tropical update. Let's start with the uh, chart right here. And looking all the way back to 1900, notice the uh, lines here. You're thinking, what in the world is this? These were the numbers of tropical cyclones that formed during these years. And notice a couple like uh, towers. Those are the busiest years for tropical cyclones. 1933, that's the one where we had 21 tropical cyclones. Here we are, 2005, we're right at 20, one more, and that ties us for the record. And it's very probable that we could see another tropical cyclone before the end of hurricane season, which is at the end of November. Right now, we're at the secondary peak in mid-October. We're starting to see signs of maybe a little bit more uh, development back over toward the Western Caribbean Sea. And that is just one of the locations that we study more closely, looking at past history where uh, cyclones form, tropical cyclones form this time of year. First of all, this moisture fetch from Panama up past Puerto Rico, then making that left turn all the way over toward the northeast. There's been several vortices swirling up toward the northeast and just moisture lading. Of course, we have been clobbered with the rain back over toward New York and southern New England. Similar situation, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, heavy rain bout after bout the last several days. Now, it appears that south of Jamaica that upper air conditions are becoming a little bit more favorable for development. So this is one area that we'll continue to watch more closely with these heavy showers and storms near Jamaica. The Caymans also need to watch an occasional shower still back over to Puerto Rico. Jumping over toward the eastern Pacific, over toward the Mexican Riviera. If you're heading that way for a trip, it's looking really good. Welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. I'm Christina Abernathy. And I'm Kevin Robinson. It's 50 past the hour, and of course, that means it's now time for your tropical update. And here we are into the second week of October, and just to do a general recap of what we've done so far this season, on average, we typically have 10 named storms. This year, we've had 20. We've had 11 hurricanes, and we've had five major hurricanes. And right now, we are just one named system off from our, at least tying our busiest year back in 1933 ever on record. So let's see how things go typically through the rest of the hurricane season. So we reached the height which was, of course, in early September. Then we begin to see things decline, but there is a secondary peak here as we move into the month of October. And where are those favorite areas for development? Well, we really like to hone in on the Western Caribbean as being an area for favorite development. And guess what? That's where we have a little bit of tropical trouble at right now. How about the names for the rest of the year? Well, we've gone through the entire list. Again, we've had 20 named storms. We could have our 21st name storm coming up maybe within the next few days. And if that's the case, that'd be our W storm, and that would be Wilma. And where's the possibility of seeing Wilma? Well, right here around the island nation of Jamaica, you can see this cluster of showers and storms. And this system really looking better, much more organized now than it was several days ago, even yesterday. And the hurricane hunters are anticipated to go in and at least investigate the storm later on, or the wave later on this afternoon. And here's a close-up shot on it, and you can see how the storm's really beginning to gel around the center. There is a weak area of low pressure with this. It's pulling away from Jamaica, but still having some impacts as far as heavy rain goes. Now expect weather conditions at least to become a little more favorable for development. And again, I would not be surprised if that's made into a depression and then eventually down the line we're dealing with Wilma. Out across the rest of the tropical Atlantic, all is pretty quiet out there right now. concern here, tropical depression 24 southwest of Jamaica right now is forecast to strengthen into tropical storm Wilma over the next day or two and that could produce some very big problems here from Jamaica westward toward the Caymans and then after that We'll have to see the steering, uh, steering winds aloft are very weak. So the potential impact right now, mostly flooding rains. But as this gets better organized, we'll be adding more impacts to this list, including wind and, of course, storm surge. 
and of course waves on top of that. It's on TD 12 and it is forecast to become Wilma later on today and probably a hurricane over the next couple of days as it moves off towards the northwest. Of course, we're going to have to watch this very, very closely. Here's a look at we were hoping that moisture would move out yesterday, and but we still saw some showers yesterday that kind of lingered. We've gotten it out of here now, and you can see any clouds that are left are just around the lower keys. Most of us saw a lot of sunshine this afternoon, and dew points measure the moisture. We're more. Do we have to worry? Right now, we'll get to the track in a second, but it looks like we should be in the clear as far as direct impact is concerned, but we could still see some nasty weather from it. Track in the tropics here in the latest stats as of 11 p.m. Winds of 35 miles an hour. Hasn't strengthened all that much here in the last day or so, but it should, within the next couple of days, get up to hurricane strength. And by 8 p.m. Friday, now the track even further west than it was yesterday. That's good news for us, but potentially bad news for the Yucatan and even some parts of the northern Gulf. We'll have to keep a close eye on this one. Either Way, we're going to get a lot of moisture thrown out. Sur sobre el Caribe tenemos una nueva tormenta tropical. Vilma es su nombre. El sistema ha cobrado mucho más organización en las últimas horas. Ayer comentábamos que tenía poca convección en su zona central. Ahora usted puede ver mucha más nubosidad bien desarrollada. Topes altísimos ha encontrado durante esta mañana en torno a este sistema del Centro Nacional de Huracanes. De hecho, durante esta jornada se va a enviar un nuevo avión para volver a investigar y probablemente una vez que estén ahí encuentren vientos todavía mayores, mayores que lo que se ha estimado a esta hora, en torno a 45 millas por hora. Importante en torno al sistema, por supuesto, saber hacia dónde se puede mover, hacia dónde se va a movilizar. Hasta ahora se ha movido en forma muy errática. Usted puede ver la trayectoria que ha seguido. Y a futuro, básicamente, a grosso modo, lo que se espera es lo siguiente, que siga moviéndose hacia el oeste y amenace la parte norte de Yucatán. Afortunadamente, hasta ahora, el extremo oeste de Cuba, Pinal del Río, parece estar a salvo del sistema, pero no así Yucatán. Vamos a ver qué puede llevar a que tenga este movimiento del sistema. Watch is still in effect for the Grand Cayman, and now a tropical storm warning is in effect from Nicaragua northward toward Honduras because it looks like the storm is starting to make more of a southerly trend, and now toward the south and west, it looks like it's going to stay well away from South Florida. However, in the forecast cone, it is expected to make more of a west northwesterly turn over days three and five. So that's why we are concerned about this, this category one hurricane and then make a more northerly track toward the Yucatan Peninsula, eventually reemerging in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And this is where the cone of uncertainty lies from the Bay of Campeche all the way through the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Right now, all of South Florida is out of the cone, but you can see where the most uh, eastern fringe of this cone is hugging right around the Keys. So the fear is that within the next couple of days or so, this cone will turn more toward the right, something we will continue to watch. As far as the moisture is concerned, we are toward the north of this storm, so we are on the drier side. All of the moisture right now over the Central Caribbean. We will continue to give you an update on this and what our forecast is for us. Hi, Phil. That is correct. You were just saying that this ties us for the most active hurricane season ever. That most active on record is 1933. By the way, if we go past Wilma, we'll have to revert to the Greek alphabet. The storms will be known as Alpha, Beta, Gamma, etc. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But let's talk about Tropical Storm Wilma. It is trying to get its act together. Right now it's just southwest of Jamaica. Plenty of rainfall over Jamaica and Katy and the Cayman Islands. They can expect as much as eight inches of rain. As of 5 p.m., 50 mile per hour winds, 50.8 north, 79.9 west, just drifting south at around two miles per hour. And it is about 255 miles south, southeast of Grand Cayman. Now the forecast cone right now is not that clear. What we do know is that it will continue to head west for the next couple of days, possibly becoming a category one sometime Wednesday morning. Then it's gonna really crank up the speed, the momentum, and by uh, 6 p.m. Wednesday, it should be a category two, up to a category three by 2 p.m. Thursday. And then we're really gonna have to watch carefully high pressure here in the Western Atlantic and a cold front sweeping down is just going to create a path for this hurricane or storm to take. Take a look at this because it looks like by Friday it will start taking a turn 
towards Florida. Right now, it is still very unclear as to where it will. Tropical storm Wilma, we continue to watch this today. It's just off the coast of Nicaragua and Honduras, and it continues to drift ever so slightly on off to the south. Uh, but in time, they expect us to make a movement off to the west and eventually possibly north into the Gulf of Mexico. This is the latest information as of 5 o'clock. You can see the storm now almost 700 miles to our south, and this track continues to move in a southerly direction, and they don't anticipate that to do it much longer as it is expected to get picked up and move a little further to the west. But I'll show you the computer models. We promise you these off the top of the show. This was the location of Wilma on Saturday, and this is what the computer models would look like, say, 48 hours ago on Saturday evening. We had two computer models moving it across Cuba, two computer models moving it west into the Yucatan. Then Sunday night rolled around, so last night, computer models all shifted to the west and towards Cozumel, Cancun, and eventually into the Gulf of Mexico. Look at what the computer models have now done tonight. They flipped again and flipped back in the easterly direction. And tonight, the computer models are taking the storm towards Florida. One computer model really slows it down by the Yucatan. A couple of more take it across South Florida, one a little to the lake, and one up of the Tampa area. So there has been another shift, and the computer models in the forecast track from the Hurricane Center takes it into the Gulf and eventually a broad easterly turn here in time. So that's what we're seeing on the computer. No solamente la Florida, pero sobre todo el Golfo de México. Por acá anda eh, Wilma. Y si se fijan, una pequeña línea ahí de inestabilidad, nubes fragmentadas, esto asociado a una vaguada que estará acercándose a nuestra área en, los próximos, en las próximas 24 horas. Eso mañana aumentará el potencial de lluvia. Vamos a hablar mientras tanto de esta tormenta Wilma localizada, eh, como dije, a 200 y pico de millas al sur de Caimán y como 200 millas de la costa nicaragüense. Alta presión aquí a, acá en el sureste de los Estados Unidos es la que nos trajo el día bastante despejado, mantiene el cielo bastante despejado en toda la región del Golfo y los estados del sureste. Esa alta presión, si se mantuviera, eh, significaría entonces que Wilma se movería directamente hacia el oeste, tal vez para entrar en Centroamérica. Pero este sistema de alta presión debe debilitarse durante las próximas 24 a 48 horas mientras va avanzando una vaguada desde el oeste de los Estados Unidos. Este, este cambio en el patrón de vientos en altura, entonces eh, abriría posiblemente las puertas para que Wilma eh, pueda tomar alguna desviación hacia el norte. Si se hubiese mantenido la alta, pensaríamos entonces que tocaría Yucatán y se movería sobre aguas del Golfo de México hacia el oeste. Pero eso es improbable. Lo que es más probable es de que esta vaguada sea suficientemente fuerte para recoger a Wilma ya como huracán categoría 3, quizás, y la mueva hacia el norte y luego hacia el noreste, hacia la Florida. Ese potencial está muy, eh, muy presente en el pronóstico del Centro Nacional de Huracanes, que es el que les estoy presentando aquí en pantalla. Un huracán que ya seguiría, sería categoría 3, mientras va desviándose hacia el norte para posiblemente pasar por el canal de Yucatán, quizás no tocar tierra, pero no es seguro en cuanto a esa región caribeña se refiere. Y luego la desviación hacia el noreste para traerla hacia la Florida, Wilma fácilmente pudiera ser un huracán que impacte a nuestro estado para este folks frankly it is too soon to tell just where this system will end up but certainly is one to watch here for us here in South Florida the computer models making a few suggestions that maybe by the weekend we'll have to uh, watch carefully for if the system could interact with the Florida Peninsula if not impact uh, we're going to talk about improving rain chances here across South Florida for many reasons throughout the half hour but here's the late afternoon satellite picture a lot of dry air across the Northwest crib and getting pulled into the system but for the most part it's been able to over with the computer enhancement that these dark purples are building here during the center, uh, near the center, indicating likely a strengthening storm. This afternoon, hurricane hunters went in there and found a very low pressure, 989 millibars, and that lower pressure often will support a hurricane, but so far only winds at 50 miles an hour. But as I said, the hurricane hunters are on their way there now. They're not that far away, and, and perhaps even uh, for the 11 o'clock advisory, we'll have an update on a new pressure. Now, the latitude as of 8 o'clock was 15.779. Se sabe que esto con el tiempo se va a convertir en una amenaza para nuestro estado floridano. Exactamente dónde todavía no se sabe, pero a corto plazo está como a 200 millas más o menos de Cabo Gracias a Dios. Eso es en la frontera entre Honduras y Nicaragua, y como 250 millas al sur de Gran Caimán. Ha tenido movimiento errático y ha hasta el momento, vientos cortantes en los niveles superiores de la atmósfera habían impedido su desarrollo. Por eso es que casi toda la actividad de lluvia estaba en la parte sur de esta circulación ciclónica. Pero si se fijan, empieza a concentrarse.
concentrarse esa actividad de tormentas eléctricas cerca del centro de circulación, los vientos cortantes están aflojando, se están tornando más favorables para su desarrollo. Y ya los vientos máximos de Wilma esta noche alcanzan 65 millas por hora. O sea que ya esto pronto, quizás mañana mismo, sea otro huracán más. Actualmente su movimiento es hacia el oeste, luego de haber dado varios giros, pero empieza a establecerse un rumbo hacia el oeste y se espera que luego vaya girando hacia el noroeste. Por el momento hay aviso de tormenta tropico y girar bruscamente al noreste para el final de esta semana, entrando a la Florida quizás eh, tarde el viernes o tempranas horas del sábado. ¿Por dónde en la Florida? Eso está aún por verse, pero es muy probable que nuestro estado sea amenazado por... Intensifying even more, becoming a major storm on Thursday, and it could be anywhere between the Yucatan Peninsula and the western tip of Cuba. But by then, we'll have to keep an eye on high pressure in the Atlantic and a cold front dipping down. It's creating an avenue for the system to come across Florida. Any minute now, Hurricane Wilma, thunderstorms filling the Gulf of Mexico, spreading into Jamaica. They've had a couple of inches of rain out of this already. Tightly wound circulation in the center, lowering pressure. We would expect to see the strength in the upper level winds will become more favorable for that to do so. Now here's the big picture. Wilma's going nowhere fast, cast track. And of course, we don't look just in the middle, but just about any way you look at it, it would have it very close to our state, and especially you down through the Keys this weekend. This may be something you are preparing for. So we'll keep you of a hurricane at this point anyway. Winds are sustained right now at 70, gusting to 86. It's sitting stationary for now as of the 5 a.m. advisory, and it's just under 700 miles to the south of our area with a pressure of 982 millibars. We think, yes, a Category 1 by later today, very, very likely, very probable. But by Thursday, could go quickly between a Category 2, bump up to a Category 3, very low shear environment, warm sea surface temperatures. Up until this point, the cone of error is not all that big, but as we take it into Saturday and Sunday, days four, days five, it gets enormous, the cone, really anywhere from eastern Cuba, if it takes a nice hard right, all the way up to the Big Bend, if it's more of a gradual curve. However, we are within the cone of the error, sort of. It could be a Keys thing, it could be a West Coast thing, but it would move towards the east, and we'll keep an eye on it for you. Afternoon and then quickly use this for each day because the computer model runs become more consistent and also the storm is strengthening. Here is kind of a broad view. This is us here at home in Florida, Cuba and down in the Western Caribbean. Wilma is now churning. Notice the cloud deck now really beginning to expand. There is some good news with the storm right now. However, and that's the fact the wind core is very small, but it looks like that will change here over the next couple of days. A little closer view and you can see it's between the coastlines of Jamaica and down towards Honduras and Nicaragua. But moving towards Yucatan and the western periphery of Cuba. Here's the latest information as of 5 o'clock, some 600. However, it is still a very powerful storm and one that is expanding in terms of its size because hurricane force winds now extend out 180 miles in diameter here, so 90 miles uh, radius in either direction. And then you get into the tropical storm force winds. Those extend uh, 460 miles across there in diameter. So again, here is the Yucatan Peninsula and the system itself right here. Watch the center of circulation as it's been wobbling here. Uh storm on the Sapper Simpson scale somewhere here close to the Yucatan Channel from the Isle of Youth back towards Cancun and Cozumel. And from there, notice the storm takes a little more of a northerly turn, a Category 3 still on Friday. A slight bit of weakening here due to some upper level environmental conditions that will not be favorable uh, for this system in the days to come. And by Saturday, a Category 3 storm just off the coast of Florida. The cone of air is still very large here from central Cuba on back towards the Big Bend of Florida, a large spot spectrum here of area, but we can think the storm right now will accelerate on off, maintain hurricane status all the way across the peninsula, wherever it does come across and eventually category one into the open Atlantic. The Okeechobee again, this was the last night's computer model run and let's show you what they did tonight. The 24 hours later, the models coming a little closer together. The biggest change was the yellow. This is what we call the UK met model. It dropped a little further to the south and by Sunday, most of the models have the storm over and past Florida. So it looks like it will arrive somewhere in the southern half of Spect Wilma here around South Florida. Are we still looking at a weekend event? Uh, we are, but uh, you know, you all uh, provide the information down to the Florida Keys, and we really want to be sure that the folks down there understand that they could get these uh, tropical storm force winds, you know, out of advance of the core of the hurricane by Friday evening. So 
the folks, especially in the Keys, need to pay uh, you know, some real attention to Wilma. We're very confident that it's going to strengthen, and uh, in fact, I'll be very surprised if it does not become a major hurricane, and it will eventually take this hard right uh, turn and you know, start moving out to the northeast. When it does that, it will also start moving faster. So, you know, the most likely scenario uh, is for this to be coming through the Yucatan Channel on Friday afternoon, and then it's going to take off to the northeast, and where that goes right over the Keys, uh, a little bit south of there or north of there, no one can really tell you, but uh, it certainly looks like the, the southern ports of the peninsula and the Florida Keys will have to deal with Wilma. And are we still looking at a major hurricane by the time it approaches South Florida? Well, that's our best guess, and we've really got some limitations uh, on the intensity forecasting, but the uh, latest aircraft reports that we're getting in uh, from the Air Force uh, it, it continue to show the pressure dropping, and, and we're very confident it'll become a major hurricane. Thank you very much, Max. Para ser exacto, esta noche, y esto ha sucedido, claro, ahora en el boletín de las 11 de la noche, porque la información está llegando del Centro Nacional de Huracanes, y hay tanto de qué hablar, que, y tantas cosas increíbles que están pasando. La presión barométrica central ha caído eh, 25 milibares en 6 horas. Y yo sé que para muchos de ustedes eso no significa tanto, pero para el meteorólogo significa muchísimo. Es increíble ver el desarrollo eh, vertiginoso de este sistema. El, el centro del de huracán, que apenas pueden ver el comienzo de un ojo formándose ahí, el ojo tiene solamente 7 millas de diámetro. Es un ojo sumamente compacto. Cuando los ojos del huracán, el, el ojo del huracán tiende a ser compacto, aún más intenso es. Eh, encima de eso, hemos visto un fortalecimiento desde el día de ayer hasta hoy. Si recuerdan, ayer estaba en 987 milibaras a esta hora. Esta noche, la presión central del sistema ha bajado a 945 milibaras. Vientos sostenidos de 110 millas por hora. Es huracán categoría 2, pero bordeando 3. A las 111 millas por hora se convierte en huracán de categoría 3. Recuerden, amanecimos hoy con una tormenta tropical nada más. Ya casi tenemos un huracán de categoría 3 en las aguas cálidas del Caribe Occidental. Así que, ¿qué más les puedo decir? Más allá de que tenemos otro increíble ciclón, otra situación de la madre naturaleza que pocas veces se ve, pero que este año se repite una vez y otra y otra, eh, lo cual es de verdad eh, difícil de creer. Eh, vigilancia de huracán, actualmente en vigor para la costa este de la península de Yucatán, Cuba, desde Matanzas hacia el oeste, también en Gran Caimán hay vigilancia huracán y hay aviso de tormenta tropical en el área de Honduras. La trayectoria proyectada por el Centro Nacional de Huracanes la ven en pantalla y también están viendo la intensidad que se anticipa al alcance de este sistema. Es más, otra cosa que acaba de comentar el Centro de Huracanes, no les sorprendería, dicen ellos, que este ciclón llegue a ser un ciclón de categoría 5 antes de entrar o cuando esté entrando al área del Golfo de México. Por cierto, tomaría un giro bastante brusco hacia la derecha y el área desde Tampa hasta Cayo Hueso está justo en la mirilla de este ciclón, el cual, como bien dijo José Camilo al principio del noticiero, es muy probable que... ...pointing out the storm has a big circulation. You can see the cloudiness extending all the way out towards the Pacific coastline and to just south of Bermuda. So truly incredible here uh, what this storm is... ...la anterioridad está vigente hasta las 7 de la mañana. Ya se han reportado hasta 4 pulgadas de lluvias en las últimas horas. Mientras tanto, tal como ustedes dijeron, chicos, el huracán Wilma en estos momentos es un poderosísimo huracán categoría dentro de la escala Saffir Simpson y ya hay avisos para sectores del de Caribe, mantiene vientos de 175 millas por hora, está a 170 millas al sur suroeste de Gran Caimán, desplazándose oeste noroeste a razón de 8 millas por hora, en las próximas 24 continuará desplazándose rumbo noroeste, atravesando el canal de Yucatán en las próximas 48 horas, permitiendo hasta 25 pulgadas de precipitaciones en sectores del occidente de la isla de de Cuba y ya como un categoría 4 pudiera estar entrando en el sureste del Golfo. ¿Qué es lo que podemos esperar nosotros aquí? Que ya en... About two miles across and those hurricane force winds at this point only extend out about 15 miles from the center of the storm. It is likely to make landfall. This is a huge circulation around Wilma and the, in fact adverse weather extends all the way out here towards the Pacific coastline of Central America and then northward really the nastiest stuff has been through Cuba and into Jamaica all the way out into the Bahamas and extending just to the south of Bermuda. So uh, once this system you know really starts to make this ease up to the north and northwest we're going to start to get some of these outer bands spiraling in and we'll have situations 
stations just like we did last night in the overnight hours uh, up around uh, the Oakland Park all over South Florida. So because this is going to be a long term thing with these outer bands moving in, we're going to have some serious problems we think with the hurricane specialist Richard Pash on the phone this morning. Good morning to you and certainly uh, maybe your eyes jumped a bit when you saw our category five hurricane overnight. Um, how's everything going there this morning at 175 miles per hour. Some reports of gusts over 200 miles per hour with this. It is still moving to the west northwest at eight. We don't expect to see a huge change in that through the day today. And in fact, um, maybe holding on to a more westerly component to that direction um, more than thought, say in past days. But in the long run, that's not going to make that big of a difference. So we're not uh, real excited about that. Here we are looking into Cozumel and it's 340 miles to the southeast now of Cozumel, Mexico and on this west northwesterly track it's supposed to basically hold on to that today and we still um, by the end of the week expect to see more of a north to north westerly movement northwesterly movement before we still expect it to get sort of wrapped up that is uh, determined to be what needs to be done. So here's the satellite picture this morning. There is that tight wound eye. It's relatively small, but the hurricane force winds are out a good 15 miles from that center. 15 miles when I think basically from my house to where I work, um, there would be could be hurricane force winds if this was the movement west northwest at eight miles per hour and the pressure we had earlier was 884 when they confirmed the pressure. They've now decided it is officially 882 again, the lowest on record ever in the Atlantic Basin, obviously a category Five, 617 miles to the south and southwest of South Florida. You're looking at the forecast track now. Usually category fives don't maintain that intensity for too long because of the fact that they've got to go through eye wall replacement cycles. They lose it up as well as a brief cold front that's expected to pass quickly on off to the uh, east after this comes in to the U.S. Uh, to the Florida coast as a category three or four hurricane that potential for large loss of life is with us here with this hurricane. And uh, in fact, I remember back in June, my first uh, congressional hearing this year, I uh, mentioned specifically the greater New Orleans area. Uh, right now, if you're tracking it at home with us, it currently sits at 17.4 north, 83.2 west. The winds are sustained at 175 and are gusting to 213. So for all intents and purposes, this has been the same now for over seven hours. The 5 a.m. advisory looked a whole lot like this. The movement is west northwest at seven miles per hour. The pressure 882 millibars. And to recap the forecast track again for you, you can see it is likely to remain a category five through tomorrow morning. As it approaches the Yucatan Channel, it could weaken to a category four. That is a possibility. However, we know with systems like this and with forecast tracks and intensities oftentimes 17.7 uh, and 83.7, 160 mile an hour winds now. That's down from 175. And indeed, we do expect that the intensity will go up and down and up and down, uh, but have a general downward trend. These very, very chico, como dos a cuatro millas de diámetro, dos a cuatro millas, como un tornado gigante prácticamente. Está localizado actualmente como a 300 millas o poco menos de 300 millas del área de Yucatán. La latitud y longitud la tienen en pantalla. Traslación oeste-noroeste, 7 millas por hora. Vientos máximos sostenidos han bajado, han bajado a 160 millas por hora. Esta tarde estuvieron en 175 millas por hora cuando la presión central era 882 milibaras. Esta proyección ya la han visto anteriormente en cuanto a huracán debilitándose, pero todavía de categoría 3 y según el centro de huracanes change in intensity from uh, today all the way out through Saturday morning it is starting to slow down its forward movement however we were thinking yesterday that by Saturday it might be close to the keys but right now still very far away the cold front is expected to dig down and then it will start to push it in our direction but remember that hurricanes never travel in a straight line. They tend to wobble north and south. So everyone from western Cuba all the way basically to Tampa 
should be keeping a good close eye on this system down to a category three by Sunday morning. And then I think during a Sunday evening, it will make hours uh, past category two status. So I mean, this storm has proven uh, to do exactly what it wants to do. And uh, we're going to continue to watch it and track it here for you. One thing we can tell you at this point, I wanted to show you the water vapor imagery because uh, what we're looking for here is that trough. You're going to see it in terms of something that looks sort of like a U. It's going to dig in um, and it really does. It looks like a U sort of like this. And as soon as you see that, that's what this system is expected to sort of hitch a ride on and head on off to the north and east. But the, the trough is 150 mile per hour winds on its way to becoming a category five right before it makes landfall over the Yucatan Peninsula. I'll have what could be our possible effects here. And me the satellite imagery. Uh, this is a nasty looking thing. It's also huge and it covers uh, an area of thousands of square miles. The tropical storm force winds about 500 miles in diameter. Hurricane force winds about 150 to 160 miles per miles in diameter. And the eye, which was a little tiny two to three nautical mile eye a couple days ago, has widened out quite a bit and is now looks like it could be about 10 to 15 miles across, maybe even a little bit larger, and it's partially covered by clouds. So uh, the, the system is going through sort of a, a, a eyewall replacement cycle right now. It looks as if it's beginning to form again. Notice how spherical and symmetrical all of the cloud tops are looking. We're getting that round uh, red donut shape appearance here. And the tropical storm force winds just barely off the coast of the Yucatan on the eastern coast where Cozumel and Cancun are located. This is a close up view of the eye. You can see the thing wobbling around and beginning to shape a little bit. And uh, you can tell it's kind of moved a little bit off to the north, northwest, maybe beginning to respond a little bit to the weakness in the high pressure ridge and wobbling a bit to the north. And again, a caution to looking for picture to picture to say, yes, it's turning because you need to look at the wobbles and factor that in as well. On the uh, five o'clock advisory, here are the numbers. If you're tracking at 18.9857, are 150 miles per hour, it gets to 156. It again regains category five status, and that is indeed forecast to happen here. Uh, wind is uh, gusting to 184, moving northwest at six. The pressure is back down to 918 millibars or 2711. And a category four storm, we mentioned, getting very, very close to the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, let's show where the track uh, is forecast to go. Again, we mentioned category five status is likely again, and to uh, and the Hurricane Center has definitely forecast that for tomorrow. And it's going to be very close to, if not over, the Yucatan at that time. Then in only a day, or in one day, it moves only a few miles here, perhaps about 100, 150 miles to the north. And you can see it begins to make that turn on Saturday in response to troughs of low pressure, we'll show you in a moment. Then weaken a little bit as a category two storm by midday on Sunday, right there in the weakening in response to the trough that's picking it up. 20 inches over the Yucatan here in western Cuba over here. but. But also in extreme western Cuba, there are hills up in here, and they say up to 40 inches of rain is possible there in western Cuba in that uh, hillier part of that uh, island because if the storm sits up in this area here or over in here or over in here somewhere, just the continuous circulation in the same general area just will continue to bring a tremendous amount of rain uh, into the area. Circulation, it is very... Cerca de la punta este de la uh, península de Yucatán, entonces todo el lado derecho del huracán, el lado que contiene la mayor cantidad de lluvia, estaría continuamente sobre la provincia de Pinar del Río y la precipitación sería intensa, continua y por lo tanto las inundaciones serían de mucho cuidado en esa región del oeste de Cuba. Así que es, es solo uno de los muchos problemas que tenemos con Wilma esta noche. Obviamente el viento va a causar un gran impacto en el área de Cozumel y en el noreste de la península de Yucatán porque este ciclón tiene vientos actualmente de 150 millas por hora sigue siendo un ciclón de categoría 4 pero no lejos de ser categoría 5 ha mantenido esa intensidad durante la noche de hoy y mientras se va acercando a la uh, costa eh, de Yucatán por cierto, el oleaje, la penetración del mar pudiera ser 10 pies por encima del normal 7 a 11 pies para ser exactos un amplio, amplio ciclón tropical donde los vientos de intensidad de tormenta se extienden hasta 200 millas del centro. Los vientos de huracán hasta 100 millas del centro en varios sectores e incluso ya empiezan prácticamente a tocar la costa eh, de la península de Yucatán y eso que no se espera que el ojo llegue hasta posiblemente mañana. Y vamos a hablar precisamente de eso. La posible trayectoria de esto y 
cómo debe comportarse. Va a ser un movimiento muy lento, o sea, viene frenando, se mueve a 6 millas por hora ahora. Es posible que mañana no se esté moviendo a más de 3 o 4 millas por hora. Noten cómo llegaría como ciclón categoría 5 para posiblemente el sábado en la tarde todavía estar justo al norte de la península de Yucatán. ¿Recuerdan cuando hablábamos de que... To show you uh, this right here, the satellite imagery, we can tell you now that the northwestern eye wall is now very, very, very near to the island of Cozumel. Hurricane warning remains in effect from San Felipe to Chetumal on the Yucatán Peninsula. This includes Cozumel and the nearby islands here as well as the Cancun area. Florida Keys and the Florida Peninsula should closely monitor the progress, which we are doing, of uh, extremely dangerous as it is still a category four storm the center of hurricane wilma if you're tracking it at home with us located near 20.1 north 86.3 west and that's 50 miles to the south and east of cozumel wilma still moving to the north northwest at this hour at six miles per hour the core of wilma will be very near or over cozumel this morning and near the northeastern coast of the yucatan later today Large circulation, though, obviously, which we know, so it is going to affect a very broad and vast area, especially on the Yucatan, which is not uh, a really large landmass to begin with. So at this point, we do expect it to affect nearly everyone there, as well as the western tip of Cuba in the form of rain bands. Maximum sustained winds have now decreased slightly, just slightly, and are now down to 145 miles an hour with higher gusts. Still a Category 4 storm. Fluctuations in intensity are expected today. The hurricane force winds still extend outwards 80 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out still 200 miles from the center. The pressure is now at 930 millibars. So the most vital information as of now, it is still moving on off to the north and northwest. It is affecting the island of Cozumel at the moment. And in fact, you can see that as that eye wall gets ever closer uh, to Cozumel. It is just about affecting it in terms of that northwestern eye. Give you an update now on Hurricane Wilma. Minutes ago gave you the latest advisory, but I want to show it to you graphically so you can write all of this stuff down. Winds are sustained at 145 miles per hour. Not seeing much change there. However, earlier this morning, around 5 o'clock, those winds were up to 150. So slowly but surely, we've seen a little bit of weakening. Still an extremely dangerous storm. Pressure now at 930 millibars. Latitude at 20.2 degrees north, 86.5 degrees west. The movement slowing down just a bit, now making a play more toward the north and west at five miles per hour, about 35 miles southeast of Cozumel, Mexico. Now, when you take a look at this imagery, you're looking at it saying, well, it looks a little closer than 35 miles from Cozumel. What we're referring to is the central pressure, the lowest pressure from the storm, which we will find in the center of the eye is 35 miles southeast of Cozumel, even though the northwestern eye wall right now is making landfall and you can you can see here that the outer bands, the outer eye wall is certainly bringing a lot of rain and storm surge across the northeastern portions of the Yucatan. Meanwhile, the outflow of the system is stretching well into Cuba around the front of Cozumel beginning to move on to the main peninsula. Cancun is a little bit uh, to the north. Uh, these cities are should be a little bit down and to the right, but I want to show you the last visible picture that we have of the storm. You can see all the way down through the center right there. That's uh, the island of Cozumel, and it is definitely in the eye of the storm, and this is the last picture that we get pretty much before the sun sets out there. All right, looking at the tropics, I want to show you one more thing, and we haven't even mentioned yet. I've been sort of ignoring this and hoping it would go away, but we've just received word from the National Hurricane Center that they now are watching this area of disturbed weather over the Windward Islands and near Puerto Rico. That possibly could be organizing as well that could become another tropical depression in time. It looks as if conditions are favorable for development out there. And of course, if it did form into a tropical storm, it would be the dreaded alpha storm in the Greek alphabet. Of course, as you know, we've never gone uh, even to W in the Greek, in the, uh, uh, our alphabet, the Greek alphabet, which started alpha. But uh, let's, we're getting ahead of ourselves right now. That's an area of concern and an area of disturbed weather out there. All right, I want to show you the radar. We can see most of the rain kind of moving from south to north. And uh, I think if you're going to the uh, game, the... Que a veces lo he descrito como ciencia ficción. Y la verdad es que 
otro ciclón más que, aparte de ser el más intenso en la historia de la cuenca del Atlántico, pues obviamente por eh, la dificultad del pronóstico en cuanto a cómo se va a comportar, también ha sido pues sumamente difícil y sumamente, como bien describió el, el director del Centro de Huracanes, desconcertante. Ahí está prácticamente arropando toda la isla de Cozumel, el ojo del ciclón que tiene 30 millas de diámetro esta tarde. Le quise poner ese ángulo un poco de acercamiento, pero aquí lo ven en un poco más amplio, donde la lluvia o la nubosidad densa causando lluvia cubre a Cuba. También ven la nubosidad que ha estado causando un día gris aquí en el sur de la Florida y las lluvias intermitentes, especialmente en el área de los callos. Los vientos a las 5 de la tarde se mantienen en 140 millas por hora. Es un ciclón de categoría 4. Así le pegó a Cozumel, así le irá a pegar también a Cancún próximamente porque se dirige hacia el noroeste a razón de 5 millas por hora y ya la pared del ojo, el anillo de destrucción del huracán está impactando la zona de Cancún también. En los avisos claros de huracán sobre toda esa región y se eh, permanece también la vigilancia de huracán para la parte occidental de Cuba, eh, donde hay un aviso de tormenta tropical. Recuerden, los pronósticos de eh, hasta 40 pulgadas de lluvia se mantienen en Cuba actualmente debido al riesgo de que este sistema, al moverse tan lentamente, deposite toda esa precipitación ahí. Los vientos de tormenta tropical también alcanzan la parte occidental de Cuba, digamos la punta occidental de Pinar del Río, eh, mientras que los vientos de huracán, como ven, están sobre tierra dentro de la península de Yucatán esta tarde. Bueno, ¿qué se puede anticipar en cuanto al rumbo de este sistema se refiere? Poco cambio. O sea, estamos hablando todavía de un viraje a la derecha brusco, suficientemente brusco para amenazar al sur de la Florida. Llevamos cuatro días diciendo esto, pero desde Tampa hasta Cayo Hueso todos estamos bajo riesgo, pero como ven, esta línea central de, esta, de este cono de, de incertidumbre prácticamente vicente. Until about maybe a little less than 24 hours, let's call it 16. It could still be stalled out somewhere over the Yucatán, but sometime between now and this time tomorrow morning, it will start that forward turn and then basically by Monday morning, so 48 hours from now, the system is expected to be making landfall somewhere along the Florida Peninsula. That is basically what we think we're going to see uh, with the system right now. So we've got the center over land at the moment. It is a category three. Again, we are awaiting the uh, newest information, though. Uh, the 8 a.m. advisory actually just being handed to me at the moment. So let's give you that information as it comes in here. Uh, relentless hurricane system will advance back out into the Gulf as a category three. But as it encounters more shear sometime during the day on Sunday, and is likely to go back down here to a category two. And then, as I said, basically from Sunday at about 2 p.m. until Monday morning, we think that system could be accelerating very, very rapidly, making landfall sometime Monday morning. At this point, anywhere really from Tampa Bay, we don't even want to talk about it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom this map in from uh, there's Wilma right there. We're just going to do something like this and kind of point at that because National Hurricane yeah. Center. A little bit of weaker side along the northwest portions of the storm and this is indicative of some drier air being ingested or being in train within that side of the storm in the Atlantic. Take a look at that big flare up. Deep area of convection, showers and thunderstorms around Hispaniola and Puerto Rico. Zoom in a little tighter. Where is all the action right now? Around the Dominican Republic. Right now, most of the action is off of land, but as you take a closer look at the radar, you can see some moderate heavy rain showers. Apparently stalled or maybe just about to move onto or off the peninsula and back into the open ocean. And it looks as if the storm is beginning to again organize, at least in the eastern part. The maximum uh, flight level winds were about 100 miles per hour, but translate a hurricane watch from central Florida all the way down into the Keys. Here's the very latest on Wilma 100 mile an hour winds drifting north 406 miles west southwest of Key West. The forecast cone is showing that it should be in the center of the Gulf of Mexico by 2 p.m. on Sunday and then possibly making landfall southwest Florida around uh, sometime Monday morning and then into the Atlantic waters. Now we're also following tropical storm Alpha. Here it is just south of Puerto Rico with 40 mile per hour winds moving towards the northwest at around 15. The forecast cone is showing, however, that whatever is left of Wilma, that there are watches and warnings in effect already for most of Florida. The uh, forecast track looks like it's a southwest Florida event. What worries me is the intensity. What are the models showing? Well, Phil, we've got some conflicting guidance here. Some models actually strengthen it up to landfall and some uh, weaken it. We're pretty much in the middle of the road there. 
uh, what I can tell you is that as it moves away from the Yucatan Peninsula, it's going to go with that warm loop current that feeds up mm. from the Caribbean through the Yucatan Channel into the, the, uh, the Gulf Stream. So uh, that's a real source of energy for this hurricane, and it will very likely regain some of that strength and could become a Category 3 hurricane again. Now, by the time it makes landfall, do you still think it's going to be a major storm? Will, will it weaken uh, somewhat? Well, our best guess is that it will be weakening, and we're, we're calling for it to be a Category 2 hurricane. But I really don't want to minimize that at all because they're going to have very significant storm surge flooding from any kind of a hurricane on that southwest Florida coast and in the Keys. And we've had a lot of examples that uh, have brought them tremendous storm surge flooding. The, uh, the continental shelf is so shallow off the southwest coast there that it doesn't take much to uh, give them a, a very high storm surge. Max, for the folks in Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach counties, the Keys, what will be the effect for us? Well, it's very different in uh, depending on where you are there. For the southeast coast, as long as it stays on the track here, you know, as the winds go counterclockwise, that's going to be uh, the strongest winds will be on the south side of the track. There's no doubt about that. But that will likely push water away from the coastline here on the southeast coast. Uh, so from that perspective, the storm surge perspective, that's good, which means we should not have any, you know, large-scale evacuations other than mobile homes and, and what the local officials are telling people here. Uh, but in the Keys, that uh, water is going to funnel up into Florida Bay, and they're going to get storm surge flooding from the, uh, uh, both from the uh, Florida Strait side and the Florida Bay side. If you remember Tropical Storm Mitch back in 1998 on a very similar track, and and that pushed water up Florida Bay, even up in Key Largo. They had about six feet of storm surge up there uh, over US-1. So uh, we don't want to minimize it there. Uh, and even the southwest Florida coast, uh, we're very concerned near and south of where the center crosses the coast on the, on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Parque la segunda. O sea, ¿para dónde va de aquí en adelante? Hacia la Florida. Sumamente probable que sea la Florida su objetivo. ¿Qué intensidad tenga cuando llegue? Esa es ahora la gran interrogante y la preocupación de que pueda llegar eh, con un ciclón más fuerte de lo que quisiéramos ver. También la posibilidad de que llegue débil como categoría 1, pero no se puede descartar la posibilidad de que llegue como un ciclón 2. Y dice el Centro Nacional de Huracanes que no descartan la posibilidad que llegue como huracán categoría 3. Ahí está la posición de las 5 de la tarde, eh, saliendo, justo en este instante, saliendo de la costa norte de la península de Yucatán, en la latitud 21.4 norte. Si lo miran en un mapa y miran esa latitud 21.4, verán que es justo en las playas del norte de la península de Yucatán, moviéndose muy lentamente hacia el norte, 2 millas por hora, o sea, frenó como se anticipaba. Y los vientos máximos, 100 millas por hora, desafortunadamente. Y digo eso porque mmm, sí, bueno, claro, perdió fuerzas. Todo el mundo sabría que iba a perder fuerzas sobre tierra, pero todavía es un ciclón de categoría 2, no bajó a 1 y está a punto de entrar a las aguas cálidas del Golfo de México, donde la temperatura del mar es de 86 grados Fahrenheit y tendrá oportunidad de fortalecerse nuevamente. Los vientos de intensidad de tormenta tropical se extienden a 200 millas del centro y los de huracán hasta 85 millas del centro, o sea que es un amplio, amplio sistema y dada esa situación ya se han emitido algunas de las vigilancias eh, de huracán a través de la región. Eh, vamos entonces, si dos del año nunca ha ocurrido, estamos utilizando una nueva lista de nombres, pero Alfa no viene para acá. Ahora, si usted tiene familiares en República Dominicana, eh, puede alertarlos de la intensa precipitación que se anticipa. Eh, está actualmente con vientos de cerca de 40 millas por hora, pero se va a desviar hacia el norte, cruzaría el área de eh, Santo Domingo y Haití también eh, como tormenta tropical y se quedaría su marebar abierto. Alfa no es un problema para nosotros en el sur de la Florida. Lo que sí es un problema, claro está, es Wilma. Ya se ha emitido un aviso de huracán, no solamente el que está en vigor para la península de Yucatán, pero para la provincia de La Habana, ciudad de La Habana y también para Pinar del Río hay aviso de huracán para esa región actualmente. Y aquí en el sur de la Florida la vigilancia de huracán que primero se emitió para Los Cayos y desde entonces ha sido extendida a lo largo eh, del sur de la península floridana incluyendo los condados miami dade Broward y si nos ve en la costa occidental el área de Naples y Fort Myers y si nos ve tan al norte como Palm Beach ustedes también están incluidos en esta vigilancia de huracán. Esta imagen la hemos estado utilizando pero es que todo está igual. Estamos esperando que gire el huracán. Todo apunta a que eso estará ocurriendo en las próximas 24 horas. Saldrá hacia el norte debido a que esta, eh, me refiero a Wilma, sale hacia el norte. La onda más profunda sobre el área del de Golfo de México causará vientos del oeste y suroeste 
en los niveles medios y superiores de la atmósfera y eso va a guiar al huracán en nuestra dirección, anticipándose que el giro, si es un poco más gradual, entonces sea hacia el área, digamos, no sé, de Sarasota, para decir alguna ciudad, si es menos brusco el giro, entonces iría hacia Cayo Hueso. Obviamente aquí, en el área de miami daily Broward estamos justo en el centro de estas dos posibilidades y por eso el alto potencial de que nos impacte a nosotros. Y el problema es que este huracán es muy amplio, muy amplio en su campo de vientos. Los modelos, todos en general de acuerdo, que va a ser la mitad sur de la península que va a ser impactada por este ciclón. Las computadoras apuntan a que va a acercarse a nuestra zona y es que es lógico con estos vientos fuertes en los niveles superiores de la atmósfera que estarán sobre el Golfo de México guiando el ciclón en esta dirección. Ahí está la proyección actual del Centro Nacional de Huracanes de cómo debería comportarse esto. Está saliendo de la península de Yucatán como un huracán de categoría 2. Vuelve a fortalecerse, fortalecerse sobre las aguas cálidas del Golfo de México para convertirse en ciclón 3. Luego vientos cortantes en la atmósfera superior impiden que se siga fortaleciendo, tal vez vuelva a bajar a 2. Pero ¿qué dijo el Centro Nacional de Huracanes en su discusión técnica esta tarde? que pudiera llegar como ciclón 2 o ciclón 3 al sur de la Florida, y eso implica vientos en exceso de 100 millas por hora, posiblemente tan altas como 120 millas por hora, y como ven, lo ven eh, gira, eh, moviéndose hacia el noreste a través del sur de la Florida. Todo el sur de la Florida en el lado sucio del huracán, en el lado más potente del huracán, ahí estaríamos nosotros.